can kick this off and get this underway. So again, it was bottom right hand side Denver, top left hand side Stefano. So far, no real differences between the two of them. And uh, we are setting up here to uh, see maybe where the differences do start to come around. Ling speed for each. I mean, four lings on the way from Denver is something that Stefano isn't building. So that's just uh, <laughs> that's on the way up. We are going to see a couple of lings just on the way through. <laughs> is Nova taking a cut of the bits? Yeah, she is. She doesn't work for free, you know. <laughs> Neurolytic with the cheer 300. Dude, thank you so much. On top of the 1,000 bits you just cheered moments ago. Thank you so much for the extra 300 bits. Get some love in the chat for Neurolytic. Thank you all the bits, guys. Appreciate it. You guys think I should just put Nova over the hero's poster? It's perfect! Oh my god, that's actually the answer, because then we have Nova on the screen, and we don't have, you know, we don't have me kind of pissed off that I had to move my Nova poster. Perfect, love it. <laughs> Alright guys, good, good, good banter, good banter. Thank you for all the bits and the cheers, appreciate the support. Let's, uh, let's see how this final best of three of the day goes. So, um... Getting set to go and uh, looking to see a Bane and Ness on the way for both players. Link speed finishing up. Really, actually, both players matching each other here. I mean, with the in base third, there really is no reason not to take this base so early. So, I guess I end up into the Ling Bane phase and we'll see sort of what the Roach phase brings us as well. Now, Bly fell to Denver in the semi finals. So, Denver already had some convincing ZVZ early in the tournament. Stefano took down Guru earlier and, you know, it looked pretty convincing. There was a couple, you know, maybe it, feel, it kind of felt like sometimes it went on longer than it needed to or he had struggle ending or tr troubles ending the game, but he was in control for the most part. We should have Nova Cam instead of portrait pictures of the in-game overlay. Ay, ay, ay. What a chance lost to fix colors. Well, we can't fix the colors because the players, when you load into replay, still have the same colors as before, so it wasn't actually a chance to, uh... <laughs> um, we don't have a chance to uh, fix the colors, unfortunately. Anyways, we set this off and we look to see what's going on and uh, let's really focus up on this game because we're having a bit too much fun, guys. God, we can't have this much fun while casting. What will people think? They think we actually think this is actually a fun job or something? God. Well, Denver's actually hiding a few lings in the uh, bush here, specifically this one bailing. Stefano has some Ling Bane of his own and already drawn it up again. Moving forward is that one Bane lane. Oh, it's going to be found though, surely. Oh my god, it comes out, but... Oh, he actually, Stefano runs into a Bane lane of Denver. Mm, a little bit of a mistake there, but he's got the Banes to kind of secure himself against those Lings. So not really an issue. He gets a pretty decent Bane hit to help out. And Denver will just die for information. Maybe just a drone on the third base, get as far away as the other units as possible. He does find himself a drone, so that uh, does work out for him, as those couple of Lings will be going down. That's going to be a nice little, uh... Ah, yeah, some good information, though, gained. I mean, he grabs himself a draw and forces another Bailin to be used as well, so... At the end of the day, it kind of works out, as we do see the hatchery going to be dropping down. Out towards the fourth base already, Stefano just expanding forwards here. Both of them with the Roche Speed and plus one attack on missiles coming through already. Stefano is going to take a second Evo Chamber, so the Carapace upgrade probably in the foreseeable future as well. It looks as though Denver going to play the exact same way. So both of these guys just going to match each other, go toe-to-toe -to -toe at the moment in this mirror matchup. Mirrored each other's builds for the moment. Hatchery dropping down on the fourth base. And we do just see this queen pushing through and pushing that overseer off and away to the left-hand side. And a few roaches coming up from both players here as we do see the Numatized Carapace upgrades as well. Wow, these guys could not be playing more similarly. 68 to 65 workers, the exact same timing on the Hydralist den. Numatized Carapace plus one ground carapace. These guys are absolutely mirroring each other here so far. They are obviously very well aware of that this is a very good build to use in CVZ. And so here we are, setting up into the CVZ. So, well... So far, so good. It's going to be passive for a few moments if these guys are already going hydro dense. And we are probably just going to be setting up into the next uh, few moments of this. What's up, Ryan Hill 12 of the cheer 100 also in the chat. And Crypto Compare, the back to back 100 bits. Thank you so much for the bits, guys. Do you appreciate it? Uh, I mean, <laughs> here, here's me being a bit of a bitch and like. You know, I was like, I think it was like 10 minutes ago, I was like, it's not been a great day for bits. You know, we've had a few. And then you guys are just like, oh, okay, Wardy. We hear you calling us out. Boom, 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 boom. Just bits everywhere, apparently. <laughs> Crazy. Thank you so much, guys. I do really appreciate it. And, uh, 
Thank you so much for supporting the stream. It's been, it really has been an awesome day, honestly. I just really enjoyed our games today. It's been so much fun. It's been so much fun. Well, we see a bit of a difference, actually, in terms of what they're going to do with the Hydra, uh, the, well, yes, the Hydra's den. Stefano decides to throw down the Lurker den here right from the get-go. And in the same time, the Hydra's den here from Denver is used for Groove Spines. So while Denver looks to really kind of try and intrigate, in, intrigate, is that the right word? Intrigate? Integrate. Integrate. God damn it. As he tries to integrate Hydras into his army to fight with, Stefano tries to add Hydras to his army to make Lurkers out of for the most part. Yes, he's getting muscular organs now, but that's because Hydras with speed can get into position to build Lurkers in a better position a little bit faster, right? So, a couple of opportunities there for Stefano. I kind of like Stefano's composition overall. I really feel the Lurkers are just so powerful in CVZ if they get burrowed. We'll see what uh, Denver can do about it. I mean, we've definitely seen Zerg so far today surviving without Lurkers against Lurkers. Stefano being that guy himself against uh, Guru earlier. So, you know, it's definitely something that can happen. And we'll see how the players move around to get to that sort of a stage. What's up, Peter Panda? Coming in with a Twitch Prime sub as well. Thank you so much for subscribing using your Twitch Prime on the channel. Always appreciate when you guys... Uh, Choose this channel to be your Twitch Prime sub of the month. It means a lot, guys. As we are going to be seeing a few lurkers starting to burrow. No Overseer here from Denver. No Ravages either, so you can't even cross of bow those kind of lower numbers of lurkers down. Which is a little bit of a shame. A few drones go down. I'm actually not sure what happened over here. A little bit of a run by or so. Uh, apologies, I completely missed that one. Stefano is with the higher lurker count now coming around the top side of 5th base. Coming up, something Denver didn't invest into just yet. He's now getting a few Overseers in, a few Ravagers as well, so again, getting the tools up to start dealing with these Lurkers, but... I mean, he only has a couple Ravagers, he can't cross about all of them, and... Well, can he take a fight against a larger number of Lurkers like what we have now set up? Mm, potentially. It's going to be an interesting moment or two as we really figure that out here. A few Hydras pushing forwards will grab an Overlord, and... You can see the Lurkers just burrowing up on the high ground. Roach is from the right-hand side, maybe going to try and dive in as well for a few of these units. Couple of cross of bows connecting on nothing at all for the moment. And Denver just backing away. Not letting Stefano surround, not letting Stefano get into that sort of aggressive position, which he would really dream to get into. Now going in towards Tunneling Claws and Burrow, by the way. We've seen that from Stefano multiple times today. He loves the Tunneling Claws play on the Roaches. Going up into the Hive as well. Now Denver's actually making some interesting moves. He's got an army up to the top side, picking off an Overlord too. He's got an army in the center, so splitting his army up, trying to force Stefano to split up in defense at the same time. Let's see if he can uh, manage it. His Denver looks as though he will instead, though. Just back away. Thank you so much, Crypto. Compare for another 100 bits on the channel. And Monscott832 coming in with the 100 bits with bits everywhere. It really is flying or raining bits at the moment. There are bits all over the place. You have to get a brush and scoop them all up and brush them up off the floor. These guys are really just making them rain, apparently. Thank you so much for all the bits again. And uh, Crypto Compare and Monster Scott, especially for those couple hundred just coming through. Pushing through the center of the map, we are going to be having this army of our Zerg Denver. Trying to push on in. A little bit of a road drop here will actually get himself a queen kill. Maybe a few drones here shortly as well. Already Stefano pulls away to deal with that. Still just relying on the lurkers, leaning on them heavily to hold his position up the ramp here and there. Denver begins to just back away as we do see those burrowed roaches starting to come into play. So while Denver had a couple of roach drops to actually do some damage, Stefano's going to use the roach burrow to try and get a lot done. He's actually going to have to burrow here, heavily outnumbered, no overseer, he could get away. Ah, there's the overseer on the other side. But at the same time, roaches can pop up here, but there's triple spine crawler. Ah, and he runs right on into this army with the spines and the overseer overhead. So he's not doing much over here. The lurkers have to dodge away from Kuros of Bowser. Stefano tries to push forwards more aggressively. It takes a decent start to this fight. Lurkers now coming into play, though, from Denver. Can Stefano get in a good position before those Lurkers come up? And he already is in a decent spot. Where's the Overseer of Denver? He needs it at the moment, actually. Now Stefano can't move further forwards. The Lurkers will hold the spot. But, again, I think the position Stefano's already created is very powerful to maybe kind of maneuver around from. Just try and draw his opponent through these choke points into what is going to be a hell of a lot of Lurker Spines that can really end up doing a hell of a lot of damage. Try and move around this side instead now, and there is already Lurkers over here, so Stefano decides maybe to just pull back instead. Both of these guys going into their final set of upgrades with Hive Tech now in play. Denver also getting into a Burrow. Even if he doesn't get Tunneling Claws, just the Burrow upgrade can actually help him to save units. Maybe here and there as he moves around, he can get a chance to Burrow to save something now and again. A few Lurkers will relocate as Stefano tries to locate down this ramp. Runs into the Lurkers, realizes it's not a great idea, so he decides to back away almost instantly. 
the same time, he actually left a lot of his lurkers up top, kind of alone. But he's actually going to have a lot of units to come on in with. He actually pulled a few of those lurkers back, so they didn't go down when I thought they did. The Vipers here don't have energy just yet to do too much. Maybe an abduct or two? No, he actually doesn't even have energy for abduct. He needs to start consuming, which he will do. Denver has a much larger mineral bank and a bit of a larger gas bank as well. But Stefano's army kind of value... I actually kind of feel Stefano, I mean, Stefano, uh, Stefano's army is better, but it doesn't actually look that way when you look at the numbers. It's actually pretty even. If you look at the unit count, Stefano also has some Vipers. He's got a lot more Hydras, 33 to 10. So where's the difference? I guess in the Ravagers. Seven Ravagers up here from Denver. And those few Corrosive Bars can definitely go a long way. There's the Abducts to start coming through. Blind Clan, Stefano loses a Viper, gets abducted forwards. Oh, no way does it stay alive. Stefano will keep pushing forwards with these Hydras, dealing insane amounts of damage here. Just until he uh, gets towards the Lurkers, then he has to stop. We are going to be seeing that uh, Viper so low, I'm surprised it didn't die. I actually called it that it was going to die because it got dragged right into the center of the army. A real kind of complicated play between the two of them right now as they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other. Safana, 3-3 free, free, on the way through, and we are going to be seeing these Hydras and Lurkers coming off the way to the left-hand side. and. Again, just trying to position, but Denver already has defensively positioned Lurkers here. Savannah will get a couple of Lurkers in position aggressively, but can't really do too much with it. Has more Lurkers over here. He's going to fall back towards yet again. Obviously, with the Vipers now on energy, the Lurkers can be engaged into gliding clouds or abducts to kind of pull them out of the ground and stop them from being burrowed. That's something which can go a long way, as we're going to be seeing those Vipers of Stefano coming through, and they're going to be trying to uh, see what they can get up to, maybe, as we are going to be seeing the... Uh, no. A couple of lurkers just burrowing away. Stefano's trying to push forwards. I mean, abducts on those couple of forward lurkers should be what he's looking for, but it's Denver that gets the upper hand on that. He gets the first abducts coming through. Now some blinding clouds actually being used, pushing Denver's army right into those hydras and into the lurkers. I think Stefano took a much better trade there. Those blinding clouds were beautiful, and they really forced Denver just into that forward location, which he really couldn't afford to be in, actually. A couple of lurkers on the low ground. Stefano has to deal with those, but his Vipers are out of energy. Unless he just tries to brute force his way through it, but the Hydras go down so quickly. The lurkers somehow dodges the corrosive bar. Stefano, the adaptive talents helping so much. As we are going to be seeing these two Vipers heading back home and getting ready to go. Guys, I'm sorry about the pink and purple again. They started before I even really noticed it. And we couldn't, even in the resume from replay, you can't actually switch colors. I'll make sure they change for game number two. I appreciate you guys putting up with... Uh, less than ideal colorings of these two players at the moment and uh, for the game. Moving forwards though, it is again Denver to clean up a few of these Lurkers already. Lurkers are going down all over the shop. A lot of damage actually already being dealt right there as moving forwards we see an overlord or overseer picked out of the sky. Plus one melee upgrade coming in from Stefano right now, plus three carapace from Denver. What's he going to do with the melee? What does he switch into here? I mean, maybe just Broodlords eventually. A nice network is up by the way and I think this it's something we haven't seen used just yet, but it could be kind of cool to kind of counterattack with. Stefano leaves a few units over here to kind of deal with the Overlord drop that's actually still got roaches in it as well. Almost as though those guys have probably forgotten about the positioning over on that left-hand side. And uh, the fact that that was something that was happening earlier on is a few hiders. Do you pick off a draw? Uh, just a normal Overlord there. How many Lurkers are we playing with now? 14 against 3. Actually, Denver's gotten rid of a lot of his Lurkers in the army. He's actually just Roach Hydra mostly, so I guess trying to just hope that his Vipers can get rid of the Lurkers and kind of offset what they can do here. Oh, but those Lurkers are Stefano! That is a gold mine in terms of Roaches. If only Roaches were gold and killing them was mining, that would have been a gold mine as he picks off so many of those Roaches there. That's a little bit crazy. Stefano moving forwards. The Blinding Cloud tilts things in his favor right from the get-go. Blinding Cloud's on both sides. Stefano relocates his Lurkers, and he will get a few more shots off. Oh, Stefano just winning out on so many of these fights. Now the Viper's in some trouble. Obviously, those are expensive pickoffs, and not just that, but Stefano's also the player with the better bank at the moment. He dodges those Lurker shots and just continuing to move on forwards. These Lurkers going to get in position. Stefano has one Blinding Cloud available. He drops it here to keep his Hydras alive a bit longer. He picks off quite a few of the Lurkers and actually maybe even enough to just have broken through once and for all. Reinforcers might be able to shut this down, but I mean, even if he shuts this down, the reinforcers of Stefano, when they do arrive, are going to be numerous and they are going to be so, so powerful. There is the Lurkers of Stefano getting pushed back. There's one in the back here that's actually still dealing some damage at the later stages of this. He's finally going to clean out actually two of them in the ground. Even I can't see Stefano's Lurkers at the moment. 
We are going to be seeing Hydra's coming down at the center. Lurk has too, a few roaches also. Carapace upgrade, finish it up for Denver just there a moment ago. We are going to be seeing just a few more lurkers coming into play. At this stage, Stefano's lurk account hurting quite a bit. Resources lost slightly, Stefano favored who. 5 base against 5 base. It is actually Denver who has a 6 base up, isn't mining from it yet. As he is going to be uh, able to take a 6 base to the top side now, Stefano. He had that denied when Denver last moved across the map, but able to get it back up here. Definitely something that will pay off for him. Just going to be seeing the lurkers just morphing in once again here from Stefano on that watchtower. We do just see a couple of changes coming down to this watchtower as well. Again, Roaches, Hydras, and a couple of lurkers from Stefano will move through. He's actually going to try and... Again, I mean, this is a 6 base, but he's not really using the base. The issue is for Denver, he doesn't really have enough army supply to truly defend all of these different locations. Stefano's just going to go for the lurker power in the front. That was horrible. He's going to lose a lot of lurkers. And he's going to realize now that that was a mistake. The Viper's making the most of it as well. That Knight is in his main base. Doesn't actually have anything to pop out just yet. Obviously, Denver's a little bit preoccupied dealing with this attack. Pulls his Viper opponent's Vipers into this army. Some Lurkers, too. The Blinding Cloud to slow down the Lurker fire of his opponent. Now, Stefano's Viper's going to get taken down anyways, though, because they just wander into the Hydralisks. That Knight is never gets cleaned up by a few Roaches of Stefano. That drops still over here from Denver. He's definitely forgotten about that. There's no way that he hasn't. Another few Lurkers picking up a few more Hydras. Hydras of uh, Denver have to be so careful running into these positions. No detection over here. If these Lurkers target the mineral line, that would be goodbye to so many of these drones. And obviously, that could still happen as well if he ha uh, gets rid of the spine crawlers first. And he is going to get rid of the spines. Oh my god, these drones are going to get surely massacred here. He's fighting against Hydras on the high ground. Oh my god! Okay, he's now finally going to start killing the drones, and he is going to start getting so many kills with this, surely. Oh my god, this mineral line is a disaster for Denver as he tries to run into this fight. The new Vipers are up and ready to go. A few of the Lurkers trying to position, going to use the uh, Vipers to maybe try and do something to create something with that. This one Lurker, 22 kills, killing 13 drones in the mineral line. Stefano can't quite break through as 20 minutes into this game number one. We have seen one hell of a ZVZ between the two of these guys. They're throwing everything at each other. Inclu I mean, Lurkers included. Those Lurkers are being fired at so much in this game. Game number one that is truly showing us some of the excellence that ZVZ can give us sometimes. Stefano Burroughs here, those Lurkers stand no chance. He might even just get this hatchery. And that's one of Denver's really only mining hatcheries at the moment, so... That's painful. Stefano unburrows and moves away. Hatchery on the south side may be in a little bit of trouble as well. Watchtower gets taken. We are going to be seeing Denver. Lurkers, Hydras, Roaches, and Vipers coming up through to the top side of the map. And, well, it's the first time Denver's gotten aggressive in quite some time, honestly. I mean, it's taken them what? I mean, five minutes or so since he's been on this side of the map, I feel. At least that's what it feels like. Nice abduct from Stefano gets a free Viper. He is going to start losing his own 6 base, but now he can maybe just attack into this position. Abducts the Viper. Viper's abducting all over the place. A blind cloud from Stefano while he can get it down, and I think Stefano just has the numbers to break through this army. Another blind cloud comes down from Denver, but now the last lurker gets picked up, and you can just see those roaches and hydras dying off here. GG from Stefano in game. Yeah, for all the people who are cheering bits and supporting the stream and helping make more content like this possible, thank you, everyone. Appreciate all the love. You guys are awesome. You guys are so awesome. I can't even believe how awesome you all are. Well, to the bottom right hand side of the map, we have our pink Zerg player from Gamers Origin. This is Stefano, up 1 0 in the best of three. With his opponent in the upper left side of the map, our orange Zerg player from Romandy Gaming, Denver. I am going to put the fan on. I am just too warm. Please tell me the fan's plugged in. Yeah. Oh, baby. This is going to be so good. Oh, I lent the entire day without turning it on, and just now I'm like, I had to shut the window because a couple of bugs are flying in, and now I'm like, please, fan me. Fan me, please. Please, just fan me as much as you... Okay, I'll shut up. What's up, Rye Red? I always have to take a moment to say your name. Rye Red. Rye Red. Rye Red 1. Thank you so much for the four-month resub. Yo, yo. Yo, yo to you two. How's it going, mate? 
Thank you for the four months of love. Do you appreciate it? Tell me about it. My room got to 40 degrees C today playing games at max, dude. I don't even want to know how warm it was in here at points with a laptop and a PC running, streaming, and some of the bits and pieces. It feels like it's been way too warm all day. It's been crazy. Actually, it's been kind of pleasant when the window was open, but man. I'm not looking forward to when it gets a little bit warmer because it's going to be a bit unbearable, I feel. I really feel. Anyways, we set up into the CVZ. And what's happening so far? Well, six links from Denver. Hmm, is he just going to spam a bunch of links? Because he isn't making a Bane nest. Which is very indicative of maybe spamming a bunch of Zerglings and getting aggressive here. We do see the uh, Bane nest on the way down from Stefano as we do have a couple of links just going to poke in on the third base. So we're going to start nibbling away there. And we do have... Uh, again, some links, I guess. I mean, this is, I guess, why Denver's making links, right? Just to get ready to defend. Apologies, because I didn't really see these links of Stefano. As we are going to be seeing. Ah, uh, Denver loses this fight, so Stefano picking up a few kills here. He does have the Bane Nest. I think Denver does have to make more links over time. We do have some, uh, well, that one segment. Well, you guys seeing this? What's happening to my map? My map's just dying. My map's just disappearing. It was like a black hole. What the hell? We do have the uh, links of Denver. Well, now they have Link Speed. He's going to start counterattacking. He is going to throw down a Bane Nest, so he is going to go into Link Bane. So, he isn't going to go skip straight over Roach. He's going to kind of come in and fight this next to those Morphin Banes. Oh, it's going to be close. He gets one, but the other two are very close, and I think it's right for him to back away. Maybe he would have gotten two of those three, but I think getting the third one would have just resulted in a lot of lost links to the point where it probably wouldn't have been worthwhile. As we are going to be seeing the Lings going for a full surround on this third hatchery. A Baneling getting uh, picked off there without a Zergling. <coughs> a little bit back and forth as we do see the Lings from Denver backing away. And he does catch Dan Stefano here. Just a couple of Denver's Lings as they do back off. So, <coughs> some good stuff. Sorry, I need a cough. Apologies. Um, Stefano gaps quite a few uh, Zerglings here in the last couple of moments. So, getting quite a little bit of damage done in that regard. Let's see a few more Banes coming up. Some more Zerglings too. A couple of Overlords and a Roach Roran behind the Mineral Line. So, he's setting up for that Roach Roran as well. There's Stefano running forwards. Going to try and see what he can grab. A couple of Lings maybe. Denver. Mm, he's going to lose those Zerglings. Means that Stefano defending nicely. Maybe he can get across the map. He starts up a Lair, Evil, and Roach Roran. Just the Roach Roran for Denver though. So a little bit, uh, a little bit of a difference between the two of them. Intrigued to see what Denver does without the Lair and the Evo Chamber. Or maybe if it's just coming in that late on. Either way, it's definitely looking good for Stefano, isn't it? Equal on workers already setting up into both the plus one and the Roaches and Roach Speed. Hmm. A couple of things coming through and having a little bit of a nibble at each other right there. And we are going to be seeing six Roaches of Denver now starting up. So seven, actually seven Roaches of Denver now starting up. Nine Roaches of Denver sign up. I mean, obviously, the real answer to what this is, if he doesn't have a lair or anything, is or even an upgrade, is this is probably Denver trying to go all in with these Roaches, but Stefano doesn't identify it yet, and so he's just continuing to make a whole ton of drones. 60 drones. Plus one, extra gas is taken, lair finished up, probably about to start Roach speed, and none of this is going to be Roach production for Stefano, and that really hurts him. He's on even more drones. He is not prepared for this attack. He's going to see it for the first time right now. And I think that has to be a cancel on plus one. And just start building roaches. A couple of spines maybe even. Uh, he starts roach speed. Now he starts some roaches. I mean, he has a bit of Ling Bane. Is that going to be able to do enough or anything at all here? I really don't know. Triple spine crawl starts to build. I mean, Stefano realizes he's in some trouble here. He is up 25 workers. That's how heavily he's overdrawn. 23 to be precise, but... You guys get the point, and that's it with some spine crawlers having started up here. Stefano can give away a few of these. A couple of Banes coming forward to start this off. He gets some of the Lings. And starts to pull drones in to try and help defend. A few more Banes coming through for Stefano. He needs to try and maybe cancel some of these Banes from Morphing, because that would be really nice to stop his opponent from getting some of that splash damage for himself. That third base is in some trouble over here, although Spines are starting to finish up. If he can pull back towards some more spine crawlers over here, maybe he can hold on. He's just about going to turn it around on the third base, so that's amazing already. Stefano's starting to hold, guys. He's still 11 workers ahead, still down 20 army supply, but the spine crawlers definitely make a difference. Uh, he just needs to be able to fight with the spine crawlers, though, and those two spines are going to drop so quickly, although he's getting on top of the Ravagers. 
Those are nice to pick off right away. Plus one attack's about to finish, so you can actually deal with Zerglin so much more easily now in two shots instead of three. That gives Stefano a lot more time to attack with. And to work, you know, it gives him a lot less time where he's dealing with Lings and more time on the Roaches. I think Stefano's going to do this. The Lings keep on going down and Denver is going to get forced away. And remember, Denver is in such a difficult position because he isn't on a worker lead. He's down at upgrade for so long here. And Stefano's the one with Roach Speed as well, so you can get so much done with this. Look at how fast those Lings go down. And now Denver, a lot of damage Roaches means they're going to die so very quickly. And Stefano's going to pick his way through this one by one. What a defense by Stefano as he takes down the Ravagers. How in the world did this happen? Denver has a lot of money in the bank and he's massing up drones, but honestly, he needs units right now because Stefano is coming across the map with Roach Speed with plus one missiles. Oh, man. What a defense. What a hold by Stefano. So sick. So sick. Thank you so much, Mr. Compactor, for the cheer 100 just before that fight as well. Thank you for all the bits as we do see those links coming in, hitting a couple of the Roaches. Stefano pulls back. Oh, I feel as though if he attacks, though, he would have gotten so much done. Maybe he just pulls back to reinforce. Nah, he's, he's droning up quite heavily, so... Man, if Stefano had attacked, I think he actually just straight up kills Denver. He might still just straight up kill Denver, as we see this queen and this uh, spine crawler fighting away. A few of those things getting taken down, slowly but surely. Things run right on in towards this uh, natural expansion here, and they are going to get up in towards the main... Roaches take down this base over here. Now, I mean, Denver does have a lot more roaches now. He's built a bunch of Stefano re drones. Stefano has to be very careful, but there's still no roach speed for Denver, so Stefano can still actually back away with this without it costing him in anything. You know, he can just back away from this fight, so nice cancel. Gets a drone, gets that Zergling. And Stefano now, he's on 75 workers. Now he masses roaches, and now there's just going to be no stopping the guy. <clears throat> he's going to have so much more production than Denver. It's going to be absolutely insane. We're just pulling all the way back towards the bottom right. We're going to see a fourth base from Stefano starts up to the side as well. Plus one missiles will finish soon on the natural, and we are going to be seeing a few corrosive bars. Starting to clean up some overlords. Denver doing what he can at the moment, rebuilding that fourth base too. But Stefano's cancel there. That was nice. Gets his own fourth base just a few seconds ahead of his opponents because of it. Have a few corrosive bars. Overlord dodges it though. Now, now you can just sort of see the roach production, only roach production from Stefano. And when he hits plus two, he's also got tunneling claws to play with. Stefano, I mean, there's nothing that Denver has in his favor. It's not like he's on his way towards lurkers or hydras or better composition or better upgrades, right? You know, there's nothing here. No better numbers, no better economy, no extra bases. What does Denver have on his side? I mean, really nothing. And he's just going to try and go for it with plus one. And honestly, it might be the better chance that he has, you know, just try and end the game now while maybe Stefano's still teching up, while maybe the upgrades are still even. The reality is, Stefano's about to get plus two, so Denver's attacking into an upgrade disadvantage. And obviously, it's not going to help him being the aggressor into the defense of Stefano, who continue to take some good fights. And that was Stefano just, again, what a miraculous hold that he pulls off there. So well done, so nicely executed. Everything we wanted this to be as Roaches and Ravages gather up. And we're going to see those few roaches of Stefano off to the side. And they're going to be seeing what they can do soon as well. A couple of overseers will morph in overhead between the bases now. And we are going to see a carapace upgrade from Stefano back in at the main. These roaches and ravages are going to move out onto the map actually, where they can maybe actually get rid of this uh, overlord. They actually just have to move away. So overlord's uh, dodging and diving. Mm, he's staying alive so far. Good little overlord. Stefano though. I mean, he's got the plus two advantage. He doesn't have much to wait for, at least in terms of trying to fight. Again, it might be the difficulty of pushing up a ramp into his opponent. Could not be. It was definitely not the easiest of things to you know, find a way to do. Some random corrosive bars there spread out to try and gather overlord. Gets the kill. Look how late the plus two of Denver is. I mean, it just means that for the, what, the next 100 seconds, minute and a half, <clears throat> Denver is going to be taking fights with less, uh, with worse upgrades. And that's just going to hurt so much. Stefano's going to push in towards the fourth base, and at the same time, he's going to hit the third with the burrowed roaches, and that's going to be a pain as well, because he can control the fights of the corrosive files. So he has a way out. He can stop his opponent from really committing through while he has roaches just absolutely massacring the third base mineral line. So many drones going down. The queen falls as well. That hatchery is going to be dropping. As a few more corrosive files come up into the sky, we see the roaches and ravages of Denver coming forwards, but not really going to be able to commit on in. Denver loses the third base. Great play by Stefano. Didn't lose anything at all in that fight. A handful of roaches maybe, but in the end he, you know, 
He kills off a hatchery, right? And I mean, he puts himself in a position where, again, it's just going to be even more difficult for Denver to stay in this game. Stefano for Lurker Den coming through his Spire as well. I mean, again, just more things that can end this as we see Roach is trying to try and hit the natural. It's actually, they were a little bit out of position initially, honestly, and he's going to split them up to the natural and the main base to get some more damage done. At the same time, we're going to be seeing this Roaches just burrowing underneath and going to try and do something while so much of the army of Denver is running around to try and take a fight over there. Stefano's going to pop up on the Ravagers. That's going to be an amazing fight. Taking down the Ravagers right away is just so, so one-sided a way to do this. And Stefano continue to push on through. When he spends his money, his army supply is going to jump right back up and Denver is now down to two bases. Denver is in that position where it's this army or die trying and I'm not sure if he's going to find you know, a way to uh, make this army work out. Well, Stefano throwing away a few roaches here, arguably. Cross of Bars coming down. That's the desperation of Denver running through battles to keep on moving forwards. Stefano just has so many roaches on the way out. Cross of Bars again going to hit on Ravagers. It's painful to see. But Denver just doesn't really have a choice. Another battle. He dodges this one just momentarily. Has to dodge these ones too. It just slows down his attack. And for now, right now, every second counts at Denver. The sooner he hits, the less reinforcements Stefano already has. More corrosive bars, and that's just going to be a GG. Stefano's a bit too good, and Denver.